Welcome to Small Talk Daily for Friday, October 31st, 2008. This morning I thought I'd go through some of the basics of the VisualWorks GUI building tool. So let's hit this button, the Edit a New Canvas button, and bring up an editor on a new UI. And this is going to have a little trouble fitting into this tiny space that I'm recording in, so bear with me over here. I'm not going to make this canvas much bigger because we don't have a lot of space. But let's just take a look at the properties. So when you bring up a GUI like this, you're left with a canvas on which you paint widgets. And the way you paint widgets is to click on it here. Now you don't drag them, you just click and then click to drop. So I put them where I want. So let me just delete that because I don't want to get there yet. Let's just go through the properties though of a basic GUI. So here I have my GUI, here I have my property sheet. I can give it a string to label it. So if I type in here my UI and hit apply, you'll notice that all of a sudden I have a title there. Now you'll notice this is grayed out, the lookup key and the catalog. And this is useful if you want to internationalize your application. Now you might wonder why is that grayed out? Well, this is an interesting question. Let me close this for just a minute. And I'm going to go to settings. So let's go down here to settings, bring that over, and go to message catalogs, down here to tools. Notice this box, enable UI for internationalization. That was unchecked. So if I hit apply, and then I go back and bring this up. Now you'll notice that that lookup key area is suddenly enabled. So here I can start typing in lookup key and catalog. And that's useful if I want to make my application independent of the English language or the Spanish language or whatever I'm doing. I would keep this string instead of here. I would put my lookup key and catalog here and then all the strings would be outside of my application. Okay, going further down, I can enable a menu bar and you'll notice over here a little paints it. I haven't included a menu. I would use the menu editor to do that, which I'm not going to go through today. I have a screencast I've done in the past that goes through that. You can refer to that. So let's close that. And then I have the toolbar, which you define the toolbar with the menu editor, which has its issues, but it works. And again, I'm not going to go through that in any detail right now. So let's go over here to the details tab. Over here in details, you specify whether you want scroll bars on your window and whether you want the area inside bordered. Typically, I leave those off. The scroll bars can be useful depending on how you're painting your UI. The position and size. Here's a lot more complexity, at least from the look of things. I have my default thing on, on size here, and I can change that so I can hit advanced and have all of these options. I can hit user placement. What that means is that if I hit user placement, when the user opens their window, they will get an empty rectangle and be able to paint the window however big they want. That's kind of the classic small talk way of doing it. It's not really the way people traditionally do things. The typical thing to do here is leave it with system default, which would open a window the way you expect on most platforms. What you can do though is you can come down here to specified and say, well, I like the width to be something and the height to be something. Or you can set minimums and maximums. Make it at least this big and no bigger than this. And you want to be very careful with these because especially if you internationalize your application, if you make these too small and you then have an application that you want to run, say, in both English and German, you could end up with labels that fit perfectly nicely in English and in German they kind of run off the page. So you have to be very careful with these things. Let's go over here to color. And I'll hit no because I don't want to actually accept any of those changes. Here I can specify the foreground and background color, the selection foreground and the selection background. And this is pretty easy. I just select red and say I want the background to be red and hit apply. And suddenly there it is. And then I can go further over here. And there's one other thing on this little list and that's drop target. I can make my window a drop target for drag drop operations. And here I have to specify what methods get sent when I have all of these. What happens when the window is entered, when I have something over, when I exit it, and when I drop. Typically these methods would do things like change the icon and over here you would have the action that actually deals with the fact that something got dropped on it. So if you were a document editor you might want to bring in the text that got dropped on you. So that's a brief overview of properties for the window itself. I'm going to go through some of the properties for other widgets in future screencasts to kind of give a broad overview of the way things work in the VisualWorks UI. That's about it for today. And until next time, have fun with small talk.